in real life on site, before you get onto uh, the room, a number of things you have to carry out in terms of surveys and so on? Absolutely. First of all, before we even sell the system to the customer, um, the MCS accredited installer has to go through a process of design and informing the customer properly of uh, the predicted performance of the system and making sure that it's appropriate for their needs. Secondly, installations-wise, we're on a roof. So I'm several meters up in the air here. So we've got some scaffolding, we've got handrails and things like this. Obviously, take that as red. And um, the roof itself, it's important uh, to consider the condition of the roof before we start to work on it. The panels are going to be up here for a long time, 20 plus years. That's not much use if your roof's only got a couple of years of life in it. So this one was in a terrible state when we arrived at the weekend, so we've re-roofed it before we start doing any uh, work with the panels. And if you believe that, you'll be better anything. But we have replaced a couple of uh, tiles. In fact, actually, you do carry spare tiles because you're bound to get breakages occasionally. And, 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 yeah, of you know, course. I mean, not them. everybody's as nimble as me on the roof, so we do <laughs> sometimes break the odd uh, slate while we're here. Um, Nick will nip out to the van and pop one. And thank pop heavens one. they're not as nimble as you. OK, that's great. Now, um, Jason, one of the things uh, for these guys, of course, is they've got to follow the, the manufacturer's instructions. Yes, yes. Uh, because th otherwise, there's implications over warranties, I guess. Yeah, I mean, when we design a mounting system, there is such a vast amount of testing we have to do. You know, we try every extreme circumstance which could go wrong, um, and this is then applied to the manufacturer's warranty, which goes into our instructions. So it's really important to follow our guidelines, our instructions, because that, that covers the installer, it covers the installation as well. OK, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see them installing this morning. Right, OK. This is the Renia Salt Varia Salt mounting system. It's an on-roof system for pitch roofs. The, the, the complete idea behind this, we tried to make this mounting system as simple as possible. One, because you simply don't need a vast amount of components to get you know, a strong, reliable mounting system. It's very fast installation time for the installer, and we are very, very secure. Uh, brackets. We only actually manufacture two different brackets, one end clamp, one mid clamp. We have a range of roof hooks to fit an appropriate tile, whether it's an interlocking Marley or a slate profile. And there's actually five components to the whole system. Brilliant. OK, guys, let's take us through the first steps. What are you going to do next? OK, well, Blue Peter style, as you've indicated, we've already mounted the top rail and we've got some of the roof hooks in, in the roof here. But if you'd like to uh, maybe zoom in this top rail here, we've left a slate off for you to see basically how the uh, roof hook mounts to the rafter. It's fitted uh, to the, the rafter is directly under this part of the, of the felt here uh, and it's screwed in with stainless uh, bolts into pre-drilled holes. Now that's very important because rafters on modern houses are very narrow. We put a big fat screw into that without pre-drilling the hole, we're going to split it. So that's a, an important point. Brilliant. OK. Now, are there any particular uh, roofs that present problems? I mean, you know, ideally south facing 35 degrees, I think is what one would look at. But, but talk us through that. OK. I mean, obviously, I think most people know uh, south facing roof is always the best option. However, something we are going to touch on, we're going to look at mini optimizers. Um, there's a very good reason for that, because this can affect, this gives you so much more options where you can actually install a system. So it doesn't necessarily have to be ideally face south. OK, and you've got A-frames and you can build and so on to make yeah, sure you get the optimum. Yeah. optimum. What about if, if air is coming to shade and so on? Is there a... Again, this really raises the importance of using something like a mini, well, using a mini optimizer from uh, um, Solar Edge. Uh, what this does, uh, cut a long story short, with, with a standard sort of string inverter setup, you can get a thing called mismatch between modules. How is this created? It could be down to a simple thing as shading. However, natural occurrences occur which will, you know, make a module's performance not perform as much as it should. It could be debris, it could be leaves, it could be bird droppings. Once you get one module on a string uh, affected by this, you, the whole system will lose some of its efficiency. By using a mini optimizer on, on every single module, this completely eliminates this problem. It also gives you the opportunity to install modules where you wouldn't normally be able to do on a roof because the, 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 I'm trying to think of the actual technology used there. It's the, um, bear with me, please. Yeah, the maximum point tracking, which Solar Edge do. It's a really, really good product, and I can't, you know, I can't recommend it high enough. 
Brilliant. And we've got Solar Edge representatives here if you need to have a chat to them afterwards. And what I should say is actually if you want more information on everything you're seeing here, if you see my colleagues around the room who've got blue ties and blue scarves, you can get your passes scanned and they will send you all the information. And of course, all the information is available on the Plum Centre stand. But I can see our guys here. They've got a panel ready. They're going to talk us through this. One of the things, of course, safety aspect, you know, high winds, you probably wouldn't work in very, very high winds, but there's a, an issue here. You don't want these things flying around. So always two hands on these. Absolutely, they're not especially heavy, about 17 kilos for an average panel, but they are a sail in a high wind on a roof, so yeah, pretty important. Now we've fitted the bottom rail there, you may have seen how simple it was, just a 13 mil spanner and uh, two hands just to hold one end and, the, and it's on in, in moments. Now usually we would have fit a whole array of panels, this morning we're just going to fit one to show you and uh, Nick's going to climb up the roof now, we'll pass it up and, uh, and clamp it in position. But Jason, is there any uh, planning permission required for this at all? No, no, not on a domestic installation, no. No, no it's not affected. And, uh, Steve, I guess uh, I'm wondering if you can uh, multitask here, talk and install at the same time. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, do, is it basically a very simple kit in terms of tools and so on? Absolutely. Uh, the rails were fitted with a 30mm spanner. Um, Nick's got a 5mm Allen key in his pocket, and that's the only other tool we're going to need. Mention a really important point here while the guys are actually installing. You can see our, our end clamps there. Uh, obviously, normally there would be another module here, then we'd have a mid clamp. The end clamp and the, the mid clamp we actually produce are adjustable from 31 to 51 mil. So they will actually cover, what, 99% of, of modules on the market. It's not like going to modules. IKEA and you have to use their. No, no, their definitely sort of, not. Uh, definitely equipment not. On. Brilliant. Okay. Now, obviously, Steve, one of the other things you do, I guess, is before getting up on the roof, you'd make sure when you've had the stuff delivered, you've got everything in it. I mentioned IKEA. Nothing worse than getting it home and finding there's something missing. So presumably that's quite an important part of taking this out as well. Absolutely. Um, when you have experience with a particular mounting system, it's helpful because you know what to expect. And uh, this particular system, as Jason's explained, has got a small number of components, which is also useful. Worse than having a bolt missing, He's dropping one off the roof, though. Uh, running down the, uh, down the ladder to get it. I actually, always carry a couple of spares. Talk about dropping off the roof. Presumably, before you take the scaffolding down, you'll conduct some tests, I guess. Yes, of course. Um, now that we've got the panel mounted, we then connect the panels up electrically, and we conduct electrical tests and commissioning while we still have access to the roof. Now, um, Jason's mentioned uh, the, the uh, Solar Edge optimizer system. We've got one of those over here. Super. Excuse me, I'll just go and fetch it for you. He is coming back, isn't he? Take it. Yeah, he is coming back, that's all right. So this is the optimizer, and we mount this on the rail behind the panel, which I'll show you over here on this spare bit of rail, if Nick can pass me the 13 uh, mil spanner. This is a mime act now. This is, <laughs> basically. So basically, I've produced a spanner from my pocket. Sorry, guys. And um, simple hammerhead bolt attaches to the, the rail in the same way that the rail attaches to its roof hooks. And uh, the, the optimizer, we put it on the top rail, but I'll put it on this one just for ease. Mounts as simple as that. Now, we would mount all of the optimizers in the locations behind each panel and connect them in, uh, in series. And then the panel itself connects into the optimizer. Nick, just grab this other panel with us. We'll show the connections. Really, really straightforward. At the back of the panel, there's a simple junction box, two DC solar cables with uh, proprietary connections on. This is an MC4 connector, one of the most common uh, weatherproof connections, positive and negative. It's all right. I don't know who that is. Don't worry. So in your opinion, is this, is this an easy system to install? Absolutely. Um, solar, uh, solar panels, uh, they're mostly this, it's a very similar format, very similar size. Uh, it's a common um, dimension of 1,650 mil by approximately a metre, 990 or so. So you get pretty quickly used to uh, the routine of putting them on the roof. And as long as you've got any components, you follow the manufacturer's instructions, 
and you plan your system well. So it's you, don't, you don't need to be a neurosurgeon to actually uh, to qualify to do this. You don't need to be a scientist. No, but it does help. It does help. What are the most commonly que common questions you get asked? Are there any other common questions? Really, it's, um, the most questions I tend to face is, is people trying to match a roof hook to um, whatever tile or slate, for that matter, is on the roof. And it's really important uh, that you do this correctly um, because the, all the roof hooks in the range have a slightly different... Uh, orientation on the angle which is designed specifically for certain tiles this is a stainless steel roof hook and this is made for a perfect tile example here which is a mildly sort of interlocking tile or, or, or an s-shaped profile tile will work really well with this roof hook so it's, it's really, really important. important to know yeah. what you're working with absolutely, you absolutely. what about inverter sizing are there any rules around inverter sizing at all um yes of course um the the whole electrical design of the system is, is part of the upfront process that your mcs accredited installer will go through um, with the solar edge system, it's very flexible we're, because we have the, uh, the optimizers and we're, we're able then to uh, simply extend and have longer strings than we could with, uh, with a standard inverter. A string, by the way, is a, connect, a series of uh, paddles connected it together in series. You can have multiple strings in a, in a system, or with solar edge, it's not a, uh, a standard string system. So, as I understand it, one panel could be <coughs> sort of at fault, but the rest will still work optimised and no problem at all. Absolutely. I mean, it really is. I can't emphasise enough, you know, how useful. You must see this as well with, with, on the installation side. The, these mini optimizers make a massive difference. Massive difference. And uh, I think I'm right in saying the J solar brackets and the inverter packs are all available at Plum Centre, obviously. Yeah, I mean, purely speaking from a technical point of view, uh, solar edge, mini optimizers, J A solar modules, it's something we work with quite a lot. Even though we're a manufacturer, you know, we manufacture mechanical fixings. You know, we work quite closely with these companies, and we come across, we get opinions from installers, and you know, I can't rate the products high enough. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. Don't go away, Steve. He's going to show us something else, are you? Ah, yes. Yeah, nearly what forgot. Are... Well we've done. Connect, well remembered. We've connected all the panels together. We've got to get them in. Yeah. Into your house to connect the, the rest of the uh, the equipment, get to the in, uh, inverter. Now. This is a proprietary flashing for doing that. It's made by DEX, and we would uh, simply install that in the roof in place of a tile to allow us to penetrate the roof through this uh, silicone portion here without losing the waterproof integrity of your roof. And just one thing about uh, regs and so on. How close to the edge of the roof would you put that, and also to the eaves? You know, how, what, what's the distance you need to keep? OK, um, we normally try to stay a metre away from the edge. Uh, and is that a regulation as such, or is that just a sensible thing to do? The MIS standards, right. uh, which are the, what the MCS require you to, to follow, uh, right. stipulate and all of those things. Also, there's a, the, to, to follow in the permitted development and not need to have planning permission, we need to conform to that. Brilliant. The, the reason for that being so far away from the edge is, is purely down, um, from, a, from our point of view, it's because of wind, wind levels. So by moving it away from there, you're avoiding the where well, you're going to sit at a maximum uh, frequency of wind speed. So Brilliant. Yeah. So if you've got wind, move away from the edge. OK. Um, just, has anybody got any questions they want to ask at all? Because the guys here, we're, we're here obviously all week, and you can ask us uh, at any stage. Don't ask me, ask the experts. Or go to the Plum Centre stand and you can ask them. And again, if you want more information, if you see some of my colleagues in the white shirts and blue ties and, and uh, scarves, they will scan your badges and send more information to you. But does anybody like a question, burning question they'd like to ask now, while we've still got a bit of time? Perfect. Now, just get the microphone to you, and then we can all <coughs> hear the question, if that's all right. Thank you. Thanks. Um, from a design perspective, can that design be done at survey on a handheld device? Is there software available where survey measurements can be taken? orientation of property can be plotted so that a design can be created there and then? Yes, that's perfectly possible. There are a number of proprietary um, software applications in the market that are approved by MCS. Manufacturers of inverters often have their own and um, Solar Edge have their own software as well. So if you uh, were prepared to spend the time and your customer is interested enough to sit and watch you do it, no problem at all. You can sit there, go through the design. Uh, as long as you've done that, uh, before you ask a customer to make a decision. Great, thanks Steve, great question, thank you.